Hey, I'm Dallas with Lower Gear Outdoors. This video is a deep dive into a particular Hobie kayak model. This is designed for new owners or to be owners. A lot more detailed than some of the highlight videos we have. So this one will be uh, 15 or 20 minutes to get into all the details. This particular model we're going to go through today is for the will work for the Pro Angler 14 and the Pro Angler 12 in both the 180 and the 360 versions. Like most kayaks out on the market today, uh, the Pro Anglers are a rotomoted style, uh, rotomoted plastic created with heat and pressure. So when you store these or transport it, you do want to. Um, be careful of applying new heat and pressure to isolated spots or you can get little dents in it. Plastic manufacturing is never as precise as your car, for example. So while we try to get them out the door without scratching them, first time you bring one of these, sorry, you're going to get scratched up. But they are designed for all, all of that. You do want to take uh, particular care with them. If you have them in salt water, we'd recommend hosing them off even though all the componentry on it is stainless steel salt will eat through the the bolts and the, any number of things so if you just hose it off that will help one of the things that you'll notice on these is we have you want to support them if storing over a larger area so um, spread out. That could be on cushions, it could be on foam, it could be on slings. And if you take a quick look at this stand that we have this one on, it is a, there's two roughly three and a half foot rails up through there so the entire weight of the kayak is being spread out over about seven or eight feet. Uh, anything that will diffuse the weight. You can also suspend these. They have handles fore and aft and these are perfectly fine for picking it up two people picking it up to carry it or pulling it with the wheel cart but you would not want to suspend it by this if you are going to spin it up in your garage or something then it would be like this example we have here at the shop uh, straps going around it in your garage you don't have to have it sitting on its side it could be up on um, just right side up normally getting it out of, out of the way if you wanted it off the floor. You can also flip it upside down on crossbars but that would be like perhaps doing one here and then one behind the seat somewhere in the neighborhood of this. So even though this and this are the same material this is pretty much impervious to any kind of indentation because of the way it's molded in but uh, that's also the least convenient way but it is Hobie's recommended way of, of storing these upside down. There are three points of access inside the hull on the Pro Anglers. Both the 12 and the 14 have this front hatch and then there is a hatch, it's called a hatch liner. It's not a cooler but you could put um, ice in here for a, a little while. There's also coolers that were designed to fit in there. The first thing you'll see are these tubes. These are for horizontal placement of rods. There are six of them on the Pro Angler 14 and on the Pro Angler 12 which we have over here there are four. You'll also notice on the Pro Angler 12 that the front hatch is a little bit shorter so the entire boat is about a foot and a half shorter most of that is just in the difference in the, in the front. There are gaskets on this and all the entry points into the hull are gasketed. So they're really, really watertight, but they're not submarine quality. So if you flip the boat, you would probably get some water in here slowly. But just regular splashes and things of that nature shouldn't affect anything. And on this back one on the Pro Anglers, you do have a built-in bottle opener. Coming back up to the front, 
we have the the drive this is the 180 drive and this is the 360 drive we'll come back to those later you have standing pads to give you a little friction if you're standing to cast you have mounting boards with universal style gear tracks tether points for tools knife any kind of retractable chain or anything could be connected here you have a receptacle here for either a sail or a a bimini top this is on all Hobie models here you have pass-through ports this is for typically for wiring there's a uh, grommets uh, there there's a little kit that comes with it and that allows you a watertight way to run cables uh, down in the hole without having to drill any holes the pro liners do come with two plain old boxes. Alternatively, a lot of people choose a rectangular box, more of a, just an empty tub that goes in there. I'm going to come back to all these. Uh, you have controls for the transducer and the rudder. We'll come back to that. Under the seat, oh, I'll come back. These are called uh, map holders. It's a good place to put your phone and other, other things. Uh, as well you get two of those on either side it comes with a 260 centimeter paddle two-part and it also comes with a t-handle if you want to minimize the use of real estate you can use a t-handle it'll go into the female side and you can leave this one in your vehicle it's a taco clip style there is additional security like that if you need it to keep it from bouncing around two molded in rod holders the h rail again for additional mountings there's any number of things that could be clamped on there typically it's going to be a rod holder up front or uh, your fish finder graph any kind of mounts cameras anything of that nature any water that splashes over here there's scuppers throughout under the seat and in the back in the rear tank well and then any water that comes up front most of it is just going to go straight down the drive hole there's pad eyes all around for connecting points this bungee can be moved around totally removed reconfigured any way that you want it for a cooler crate anything that you might have back here this covers the rudder for the rudder pulley so you have handles left and right and the pulley is going here so if you ever need to tighten up any lines or uh, cable lines or anything for the steering that is under here and then finally in the back we have the rear handle additional H rail this is good for putting if you have a 360 visible light and you want that as far away from you as possible and then the serial number is going to be embedded in right here in the stern area there are two drain plugs here um, you would only need to use those in the case of a whole breach or if you had left a hatch open and got a lot of water in you'll also see these little black dots on both both sides those are covering up embedded nuts uh, primarily for an anchor trolley one of the highlighted advantages of the pro angler is the seat this is called a, a vantage seat it's probably the best one on the market with any with any kayaks it's adjustable the level of recumbency if you want to call it that you can control it that way this way it goes up and down and then it pops out <clears throat> makes a really nice uh, beach or a camp chair there's, a, there's lumbar support as well. Looking at some of those features, the, this functionality is controlled by these barrels. There's a ratchet in there, so that one controls the bottom. This one controls the back. If you're gonna paddle this, you might want it at more of a 90 degree angle. Some people like to pedal in more of a recumbent bike position. And to release these, you push the barrel in 
and turn it the opposite direction. So this is easier when you're sitting in it. I'm going to push this in and turn it that way. And you'll see that allows this to go way back. And then I can, I can bring that up. And the same thing if I want to drop this down. It's just whatever's going to be a comfortable position for you pedaling. In the back here, there is, uh, this is a, a tightening thing, it's called a boa uh, restriction item, like boa like a snake. And you just turn it clockwise and it tightens up a strap. And that puts tension on here. And to release it, it's like a watch stem. I'm just going to undo it there. And when I push it, it's going to release it on its own. So again, to do that, that's giving it the lumbar support. A lot of people, it's just a set and forget, but if you're fidgety, you can adjust that as needed as you over the course of the, the day. The, the height of the seat is controlled by this bar here that is, can be pulled out of your way and that is handled by this control feature here called a kickstand. So as I pull this, you'll see it making that motion. So it's, it defaults to the high position, but if uh, I wanted to lower my center of gravity, I would just take some of the pressure off the seat, lift up slightly like so, pull it out of the way, and then down I go. Now, as soon as you do that, however, this wouldn't be a very practical pedaling position. So I am going to drop the bottom of the seat down some and then bring that up. And that would be a more practical seating position. One of the rules of kayaking is to tether anything of value off. That's going to include your keys and your uh, phone. We'll talk about the drive, but the seat has a tether on it. And so to undo that, and then the seat comes out like this, and now you have your beach or a camp chair. And then to put it back in, I'm gonna put those feet in at an angle like that, and then lock it back into place right here. And then this way I, I can't lose my expensive chair if the boat does take a spin sideways or something. There is another standing option that you have with this. If I remove this, which is holding the bottom of the seat, if I just pull that down, this will come here. And then <clears throat> I can stand here, push my legs out this way and in the back and I'm fully braced in on three sides. This is an option if you like to stand and cast. Alternatively, if you want to have a wider stance, then you would stand here where we talked about and optionally use uh, H-bar, which is uh, just a stand-up bar. It gives you some additional stability. I'm gonna take a quick look underneath here that we didn't get to see earlier. If you're not standing here, you can use a strap to put in uh, additional Plano boxes or anything that you want to put in under here. But one neat thing that the Pro Angler has and a couple other models, this is related to a transducer. So the transducer is on the other side of the hole in the water. The cabling for the transducer comes out, down through here to get back into the hole and then it's going to come out either the left or right hand side along typically with the power for your from your battery but unique to the pro angler is this this is called the guardian plate this is on the bottom of the hole if you have what we'll call a standard fish finding setup without side scanning then you just mount it here. The cable is going to come up through here, as we talked about. And this is protected by this. But if you want side imaging, then the transducer is going to get mounted on this side of this plate. And then this plate 
will rise up like this to bring the transducer higher than the bottom of the hull so you don't if you bring it ashore you're not going to be hurt in any that's controlled on this bungee that raises it up it's attached to this cable which in turn is attached to this handle so if you wanted to suck the transducer up inside the hole you would be pulling that now from the factory this is bolted off so you want to make don't yank that one by by mistake steering on the pro anglers and all the hobies is pretty straightforward if you want to turn left you'll take the handle and just point it to the left point it to the right one unique thing about the pro anger is, is you can control it if you're right or left handed there's also a riser if you want that comes as part of the kits if you want to raise this up a little bit closer to the seat that's an option as as well one of the things that you can do is like this is easy if you want to stiffen the steering you can engage this boa tightener here and then just turn it clockwise and that will stiffen it up that comes into play if you're covering long distances and you want to minimize the amount of adjustment that you have to do and then um, <clears throat> along with the rudder there's also a, a skeg board so let's take a look at those in operation underneath the hole what you're seeing now is the rudder and the skeg board the rudder is in the back here and the skeg board is in front of that they are both spring loaded so if you hit something from the front they will just go up but you do have to be careful going backwards the purpose of the skeg board is to offer additional stability it's like a center board of a sailboat if it is deployed it is going to extend your turning radius um, so if you're in tight quarters you may want to raise it if you're going to stand and cast you may want to drop it the up and down is controlled by pull handles in the cockpit this will raise the skeg board up and recess it inside the hole and this will do the rudder and again deployed all the cockpit controls there are cleats here so for like and they're labeled so like what we were just talking about in the skeg to retract it you're going to pull parallel along the wall of the cockpit wall like that and then so right now it's up in the hull to deploy it I need to pull this out at a 90 degree angle to release it from these alligator teeth in here so it'd be like this and there's a bungee that's bringing it in and then on the other side is the rudder so it says rudder pull it straight back and that's why you'd have it for transportation or storage typically and then I'll pull it out at a 90 degree angle and that will deploy it back in the water. The heart and soul of all Hobie kayaks is its propulsion system, which is this. This is the 180 turbo drive. It's 180 because it has a reverse functionality on it. We'll compare it to the 360 here in just a second. It looks like you're just pushing water sideways, but they flex in the water pushing it behind you. It's a very efficient transfer of energy between you and forward motion. Much more powerful than paddling. Um, it's very easy to get out of harm's way. So to remove the drive, I'm just going to lean down, click, click, and yank it out of there. And then it automatically locks back in. This amount of play is normal. Looking at some of the features of the drive, these are called fins and these are called these are kickups which we'll get into in a second this is the spine axle drum crank arms there's a lot of bicycle kind of features to this there are chains here 
that are controlling it. And so this is the motion that you're doing back and forth, like an, somewhat like an elliptical machine at the gym. And then this is going to flex in the water under water pressure, pushing it behind you, and that's where you get the forward propulsion. There is a roughly a quarter inch steel mast that this fin slips right over. This is always the leading edge, so when I'm looking at this, I know I'd be going forward. If I see an obstruction, I can just push my feet like this or that and slide right over it. So while I normally need a reliable about two feet of clearance, I can get away with four or five inches if I just push it like that. I can coast over a submerged rock or something like that. If I'm going across a sandbar or something lengthy, I can butterfly it like that and still get forward motion. This was called a 180 drive. And if you watch the fins, you'll see them flip around at 180 degrees. And now I'd be going backwards. And I'm controlling that through these. They are marked reverse and forward. A couple things on that is when you're, quote, changing gears, you do want the feet side, the, the, your legs side by side like that. And you want to pull straight back like this and not up, you're just needlessly torquing the handles here. You have plastic and metal, and down here you have plastic grooves and a metal mount. Those are going to mesh up. And what these are, these are called guide pins. Those are designed to just force you to drop it in straight. Ten years ago, people, those weren't on there, and people would put them at an angle and cause some problems. So I can just drop it in straight. And then this is automatically locked. It's a little counterintuitive. You would think you would need to do that to lock it, but that actually unlocked it. It's a cantilevered handle down there that is allowing that to happen. This little loop keeps these from flopping around and also encourages you to pull straight back rather than up. If you're going to launch the boat, typically you're just going to have the drive down in the cockpit floor. Once you have a couple of feet of clearance, you can then drop it in and then drop your start pedaling and drop your rudder around the same time. The reverse of that is true when you come ashore, maybe you're 20 feet out. We definitely suggest the first time out just stopping, setting it down and then just paddling in until you get the hang of how fast you're going. One of the big problems that sometimes people have when they first get in these is that they're coasting faster than what they may expect. The, we talked about being able to dodge an obstruction like that, but if you do miss the obstruction and you accidentally hit something, that's the kick up feature. They're hinged here and then as you pedal, they'll snap back in. So these will both pop up and that helps protect your investment in here. We talked earlier about securing anything of value off, tethering it off. That's what this is for. Moby makes a couple different leashes. You could use a paddle leash or you can make your own with a couple of carabiners attached to here. And then anywhere structurally on the boat, you basically just want to be able to salvage it if you do have it holding on and it falls off the side of the boat or anything that you can retrieve your 900 some dollar drive. This drive is the 360. Now the 360 and 180 drives are not interchangeable between the holes. They are interchangeable between the 12 and the 14, but they are unique. So you can see the hole in the hole for the 360 drive is a lot different than the hole in the hole for the 180 one. So they're not interchangeable. But just real quick on some of the feature differences between it, as a 360, instead of just being limited to forward and reverse, you can actually go at any increment in between. Thus, that's why it's called the 360 drive. You still have the kick up features. It's still a back and forth motion like that, but 
you're controlling that, there is a third handle on the 360 models, and that is on the left-hand side of the seat. So this one is your rudder that we've already talked about. This one is the one that controls the movement of the direction of the drive. You have this handle, there's a stem that goes down into the hull, and it is attached to something, it's almost like a fan belt that runs through this tube right here. And then that is driving this worm gear here. So as I turn it, you'll see that that worm gear turning, and that in turn is turning this flywheel. And that's how you get the 360 degrees of, of movement so when you're steering the 360 models, you have the left and right of the rudder, you have the multi-directional uh, flexibility in the drive, and you also have the skegboard. So whether how those three go together will dictate how precise you can maneuver the 360, you can crab walk these things, is what they're famous for as far as just really precise movement. This one also snaps in a slightly different, but same concept you just have here. Leg length on these is slightly different. The numbers don't mean anything other than a point of reference, but if I squeeze that, if I'm really tall, I can move this all the way up to eight. And if I'm shorter, I can bring it all down to one. The range of motion is the same. It, regardless of where it is. So the only thing you want to do is just make sure they're on the same number. Same way they teach you on a bicycle to when you're fully extended you want still want to have some bend in your knee. So when you're adjusting the leg length just adjust it out so that when fully out one way or another you still have a little bit of bend in your knee. On the 360 drive you have this indicator here and that is to point the direction that the fins are in so I know I would be going straight if I start pedaling because I cannot see the fins underneath me the handle here if you watch that as I turn it you'll see it going around at 90 and then 180 and then 90 degrees the other way and now straight again one thing that you're going to want to make a habit of, it is going to want, you are going to want this to be straight when you pull it in and out because if these are at an angle like that, it won't work, won't come out, go back in. And you also don't want to do this. So I've got this straight. I don't want my handle here. So even though I can drop that in, that's really going to confuse me, but you would go by that. So these are pointed regardless of that. Just make it a habit of without having them both in the same direction and now they match up. One last thing on the drives. When you have it out we talked about that you could do this to go over an obstruction but you may never need it but one thing you can do if you want to protect the bottom of the fins let's say you were going to jump out and go swimming or something you may not want to leave it dangling like that because it might float over to a shallow area and hurt the bottom of the fins. So I can do this. I can take this bungee and just hook it on the handle or hook it there. And now those fins are up against the bottom of the hole and they're protected even if I'm not, say if I, I jump out of the boat to go for a swim. There might be another circumstance where you don't want to use the drive it all. Let's say you're going here locally down the Salt River, you don't have reliable depth. So while water <clears throat> is just going to ebb and flow back up in, into this, if you were paddling this kayak without the drive, you are going to have water churning there. So what it comes with, this is called a cassette plug, that drops in there and does a couple things. It keeps the water from churning, but perhaps more importantly, it keeps you from dropping stuff down the down the drive hole. One of the great features of the Pro Angler and what it's well known for is its flexibility 
in having great foundations for a wide range of accessories and kayak fishing riggings that you might want to add to it to meet your particular style of fishing or sport that you're using it for. We talked earlier about we have the H-Rail and the gear tracks. These gear tracks are fairly universal among kayaks and they are looking for a half inch T-bolt. This particular one is a one inch ram ball but this could just as easily be a Scotty mount or a larger Rambo or rail blazer or anything that they're all going to use this and the, and the way that works It goes into the fat part here just to get it going And then I can move it anywhere. I want along the track and once I've got it in the position. I want I just tighten it Tighten it down like that the H rail is more designed for just clamping on there are like this one is sort of a universal mount the insides of that are designed to match up with this. It has some set screws and thumb lock. And so that's going to be something like that. And then move it. I can loosen this up and move it wherever I want. I could bolt anything I want to this. And then there are also custom design ones that could be for different types of fish finders, um, camera mounts, anything that you might want on that. It does come with a water bottle holder and it has the same clamping mechanism and the Pro Angler also comes with this. Uh, it reminds me of a gun rack back in the day but this is designed to hold the butt ends of your rod and reel setups. So if you're using these horizontal tubes for storage of rods, the tips go that way and then the reel side of it is going to rest in here. You can have up to three of them, although it gets a little jumbled up if you've got uh, three reels here. But you can move this around and then there is a bungee on this side which will come around and help secure it. Although we do not recommend transporting your rod and reel setups in here uh, in the back of your truck or a trailer. Those are better off inside your vehicle. And that's your comprehensive walkthrough for the Pro Angler series. Many of the features are the same for the 14 foot and the 12 foot. It is all the, the seat and the drives and everything the same. The only difference in the hull designs between the 380 or 360 rather and the 180 is just the difference in the hull, but they are not interchangeable as we discussed. So whichever one that you want to choose from, we just want to give you a little bit of a head start. You're going to learn more than you know, learn half of anything you're ever going to know first 15 minutes out on the water. We want you to be as safe as possible. Come by and see us after you get out there a few times. There's inevitably going to be some accessories that you want to add. Any way we can help, just let us know.